Good morning. So it's uh, a privilege to be here with all of you and uh, uh, to talk about an issue that has been uh, on the front lines of the, at least my uh, stay in Washington while I'm here the last seven years, which is the deepening of the US-Greece strategic relationship. And we're privileged uh, in particular to have on our panel two of the protagonists of this uh, deepening uh, relationship, which of course are the ambassadors of Greece to the US, Harry Lalakos, and uh, the ambassador of the US to, to Greece, Mr. Jeffrey Pyatt. And uh, uh, they both uh, took office in the summer of 2016, right after the peak of uh, the uh, crisis, uh, the Greek uh, financial crisis, the, the summer before, uh, and uh, they de definitely put the deepening of the strategic relationship front and center in their endeavors. And uh, I would like to start, uh, kickstart actually this discussion by asking our panel to kind of um, have their first reaction to our topic, basically, the strengthening of the strategic partnership. Uh, do you all agree? Is it, what, what are your thoughts on the how important is the strategic partnership between the US and Greece right now, and whether indeed it has strengthened during the past uh, few years? Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be with, uh, with everyone on the panel. Well, I think absolutely we have seen a, an historic strengthening of the U.S.-Greek uh, relationship. And I think, quite frankly, for uh, those of us who analyze this, the fact that this strengthening began under a left government is in of itself uh, an extraordinary fact, where we see the strengthening of the security relationship the economic relationship, the strategic conversation now has a mechanism to deepen it. And we've not only deepened the bilateral relationship, we've, we've realigned in some ways strategically the regional relationship between the United States, Greece, Cyprus, and Israel. So I think you have these structural deepening uh, but we do that deepening because the region has become so fundamentally unstable. So I think this is a, a deepening with deep purpose, and I'm sure we will talk about that as we go along. But absolutely, we are really uh, witness to a historic deepening of the relationship, but to underscore there are deep structural problems in that region that we are continuing to see in great force today. And uh, I would like to ask uh, our ambassador, the Greece ambassador to the U.S., uh, Mr. Haris Lalakos, to actually, um, when, uh, once, when you took office here in Washington, it was, uh, Greece was still considered the problem child of Europe, right? I remember the, we were mostly covering the IMF rather than uh, anything of the diplomatic nature for the best part of, of, of the financial crisis. And I'm, I'm wondering how, did, did you... Um, how did you experience this uh, uh, deepening of the strategic partnership, and what do you think drives it? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present you know, the, some views from the Greek Embassy. And uh, you used, Katerina, you used uh, twice so far you know, the term strategic partnership. It's very key. So uh, let me go back a little bit. About 15 years ago, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, but about 15 years ago, when I was posted uh, again in Washington as a mid-career diplomat, uh, we first took notice of uh, the United States using the term strategic partnership uh, for Greece in official correspondence and official documents. And we were thrilled, we took note, you know, and uh, we tried to see what this entails. And basically what we found out, you know, uh, over the years is that it entails that you know, you have a privileged uh, relationship and you can give it whatever content you agree with, you know, the other side to, to do so. Uh, and this notwithstanding, uh, and notwithstanding also the fact that Greece and the United States have always been, you know, very good friends and allies, uh, we should not forget that we went through uh, periods of uh, relative, you know, uh, uneasiness, uh, friction, call it whatever you want. 
Uh, in, you know, just let me briefly remind, without getting into the particulars, that you know the years 2004 or 2008 were not exactly smooth years, you know, in the bilateral relationship. And uh, when, to go back to your question, when I arrived here about three and a half years ago, I saw that already there was a momentum which we were able, you know, to build on and to uh, reach a point where I think everybody agrees is probably the apex of the bilateral relationship, certainly after World War II, certainly after 1974. And uh, I think that the culmination of this process was the inauguration of the, the launching of the strategic uh, dialogue about, about a year ago. Uh, and uh, if I may just you know, uh, point two or three key aspects of uh, this uh, spectacular improvement in the relationship, I would say, first of all, you know, our cooperation on the regional level, first in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, and the three plus one. Uh, uh, second, in the Balkans. And uh, the very, the very uh, constructive and cautious uh, role of the US throughout uh, a lengthy and very, very delicate negotiation that we had with our northern neighbor, you know, uh, North Macedonia, as it turned out after the meeting. Uh, also, uh, although it's not strictly bilateral, uh, we witnessed uh, a, uh, an amplification of the relationship, the bilateral relationship between the United States and Cyprus, not limited in you know, the Cyprus problem, but you know, uh, a cooperation uh, which befits you know, the relations between two independent countries. So uh, we made huge progress, and the next question, of course, is are we running out of steam? And uh, my answer with that would be no, 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 not at all. However, we need you know, to have, at least from you know, the Greek point of view, some concrete results. And the main concerns of Greece at this time uh, are uh, security concerns. I don't want to go deeper into this introductory remarks, but you know, I believe it's uh, a fair assessment to say that Greece expects some concrete security uh, guarantees or uh, assurances uh, from its big friend and ally, the United States. So uh, this is where we are, I think, right now, and I think that the prospects for the future are very bright. before about the alignment of uh, interests between Greece and uh, the U.S. And uh, as I understand, this includes the stabilization of the region. Um, and uh, we just heard Ambassador Lakos talking about uh, making it more specific. How do you think we can move forward in these strategic relations? What's the next step for, for such a, a relationship to be, as uh, it was mentioned yesterday, uh, further institutionalized with specific projects and common uh, work going forward. Thanks, Katarina. Well, first, what I would, I would emphasize is, as somebody who's been on the ground watching this process for more than three years now, the really remarkable acceleration that we've seen since July 7th. Um, we had a very good relationship under the previous Greek government. Under this government, we are very quickly taking that relationship to the next level. And a lot of it driven from Maximu, from the Prime Minister, whether our updated defense agreement, um, the progress that we're seeing in terms of our deepening energy relationship, and the really remarkable convergence which Ambassador Lalakos alluded to in terms of how we work together. And I think as I look out over the next couple of years of U.S.-Greece relations, I think one of the themes that you will see more and more of is the United States and Greece engaging as real partners and allies to tackle difficult issues in the wider neighborhood. Um, you see that certainly in the Western Balkans, where the United States and Greece agree strongly on the importance of seeing all of these countries continue to move towards their Euro-Atlantic future, pushing back on the significant malign influence of, of Russia in particular, Russia's efforts to undermine the church, Russia's meddlesome activities in countries from Montenegro to North Macedonia, Russia's desire to capitalize on the setback which President Macron and the European Union delivered um, last month when they decided to delay the progress of Albania and North Macedonia towards EU membership. 
So I think on these issues, you're going to see American and, and Greek diplomats working together, or American and Greek military officers collaborating, developing strategies and plans that are premised on, on shared interests, similarly in the, in the Eastern Mediterranean. And I think the big story on the Eastern Mediterranean that I alluded to yesterday is the return of great power competition, the fact that you have China and Russia as powerful present actors who have a different view of the world, um, and a region that was frankly taken for granted in US strategic analysis for many years. And I'm sitting next to Heather, because she and I, we started this project about two years ago, trying to think more systematically about what a, um, what an, a, a forward-leaning US strategy for the Eastern Mediterranean would look like. And I'm, I'm very pleased about the progress we've made on that. And the, you saw how prominently these issues figured in Secretary Pompeo's visit to, visit to Washington. But I think the story for the next couple of years is, is going to be how we come together as allies, as partners. And, and I think on Ambassador Lalakos's question about um, what does Greece get out of this, I think the best answer has been given by Foreign Minister Dendius and his very clear emphasis on the benefits that Greece feels, for instance, uh, and Defense Minister Paniotopoulos as well, the benefits that Greece derives from, for instance, having um, a more prominent U.S. military presence in Stefanovikio and Larissa and Alexandropoli. So um, I'm very comfortable about the trajectory that we're on, um, but also want to emphasize that none of us is sitting on our laurels at this point. We're going to keep working on it. And uh, it's interesting to note that uh, this strengthening has been happening uh, at, at the time when uh, there are transatlantic tensions, there are various uh, points of friction in uh, the transatlantic relationship. And I, I would like to ask uh, Nicholas Logothetis, uh, who you have, uh, as the founder and chairman of the Concordia Summit, uh, you have a wider picture of the issues that uh, the world is talking about right now. And I was just wondering, and you're obviously Obviously, also, you know, uh, uh, Greek uh, uh, American have uh, Greek heritage, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering how do you see the strengthening of the U.S.-Greece relationship in the context of what uh, you're tackling at your conferences, at your summits? How does it fit in, in the greater picture? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you for having me, uh, Simeon. Congratulations on uh, another um, fantastic event. And Alexis, I don't know if he's here, but uh, hopefully this will be the first of many. Um, uh, it's great for me to, to be able to be here on this panel this morning. Um, I'm obviously much less involved on a day-to-day -day basis um, with the Greek-American relationship. Uh, what I'll say is I think uh, my wife and I moved to Washington a few months ago, and so I've, I've become sort of a, um, you know, even more familiar with, with Washington uh, diplomacy and politics, and I think a critical aspect of the Greek-U.S. relationship is uh, that it's supported from a bipartisan perspective. Um, and in Washington, um, that is so important. And not all countries, for lack of a better term, have that. And, um, you know, as, as, as we know, uh, I believe uh, I'm right about this, but I think Greece is the only country to be welcomed at the White House every year apart from Ireland. Um, and that's no small thing. Uh, and so, from my perspective, when, when I'm here and talking to people, uh, there's just such a uh, sort of fascination and uh, desire from Americans to learn about Greece in a way that there aren't with many other countries. Um, and so I, I would say that uh, what we have here in being a nonpartisan, bipartisan issue, however you want to look at it, is really critical. And, and Ambassador Payet, Ambassador Lalakos, and everyone who's involved in this very special relationship that's, that's been developing over the years, should be very proud of that. Certainly striking how uh, the transition of the strengthening of the relationship, the strengthening of the relationship has continued throughout different administrations with the, the different agendas, uh, both in Greece and the United States. And uh, uh, I, and uh, if anything, being here in town and uh, being uh, in America, there is uh, a strong diaspora that has been very active in U.S.-Greece relations throughout the years and historically. And I want to turn the conversation and take it to Drake Pechrakis, who's the chair of the National Hellenic Society, uh, and uh, I ask you from your perspective, how, how do you, Drake, how do you see um, the role of the diaspora in this uh, endeavor to strengthen the relationship and take it to the next uh, strategic level? 
Thank you, Katerina, and thank you, everyone. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here as well. And uh, as you stated, and along the same lines as, as Nick, um, uh, I rely on many of the folks that are in this room uh, that are experts in foreign policy and, and strategy and geopolitical um, energy and security, all the, the, the critical issues that are, are important to the dialogue between the United States and Greece. I, from my perspective, as, as, as really as an investor or as an active community member here in the United States and in the diaspora, uh, I think it's it's not only encouraging but it's also important. And when I look at the uh, you know the word deepening, and it was talked about yesterday as well, um, we have an opportunity uh, for those of us here in the diaspora as well as the, the number of Philhellenes that that uh, you know are uh, near and dear to us and the causes that we help support and fight for. Uh, to really take advantage of this opportunity because this door now is is open for us to to seize the moment there you know there are many people in this room that are uh, leaders of many organizations in this country and uh, similar to uh, you know uh, the organizations I'm involved with doing a lot of things uh, in, in kind of in their space I see this, I see this as a great opportunity to really at all levels and really deepening at, at all levels uh, whether it's students uh, young professionals uh, people of business in different areas, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, in the tourism sector, whether it's artists to artists. It, there's point-to-point, person-to-person, point-to-point contacts that we can do a much better job at. And I think we can really strengthen that relationship where we already have, you know, again, the good news is we already have many of those uh, relationships in place. Um, I think now there's an opportunity with, especially with our, our new government, uh, a new deputy foreign minister, uh, we really can take that to such such a, a greater level that it's sustainable in long term. And that's the thing: we want stability. We we, we want our countries uh, to work as close together and as productive uh, as they can. However, it really needs to go beyond you know the the, the important things as you know the major trans transformational investments we're seeing now in Greece. Um, but let's face it: for the vast majority of people in the diaspora that love Greece, that love this country, and want to work and help, they can't do that. You know, not everyone has a company that they can consider moving to Greece or opening up in Greece. So we're relying on, obviously, our, our, our folks here in the government and our foreign policy experts to, to help us. But we in the diaspora uh, have an opportunity, again, at all levels, to really become more, become closer, but also to collaborate and to be able to um, have the have the opportunities to uh, work much closer with uh, not only our government officials but also our counterparts in Greece. And it's really something we haven't done. Let's face it. There's been for a number of years. You know, the diaspora really hasn't, uh, other than vacations and supporting family, really hasn't been active in Greece, and vice versa. So I think now there's a, you know, there's a renewed interest in in having those open relationships and creating that dialogue and creating that partnership um, that I think we can sustain for a long period of time. And I have to say, your organization has been uh, in the vanguard of that in uh, bringing uh, uh, young Americans, Greek Americans, to Greece to interact with their uh, students there, Greek students there, and actually um, um, basically introduce each other, uh, introduce each other to each other's culture. So, uh, which is same, but not exactly the same necessarily. And I, I want uh, to take the opportunity to ask uh, Mr. Kostadinos Kiranakis, who's uh, a young member of the parliament uh, with the New Democracy Party in Greece. And he's also one of the founders of the Transatlantic Youth uh, Summit while you were based in Brussels. I understand that you, uh, you co-founded this, uh, uh, this uh, summit that brings together youth, uh, young politicians from both uh, uh, Europe and the US to talk about issues of common interest, NATO, uh, terrorism, uh, challenges of economic cooperation between the country. And um, uh, from your perspective, and I understand that happened during the crisis, how did you see Greece fit in that picture? And uh, how do you see Greece now in this discussion? Thank you, Katerina. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I also have to say, to say uh, thank you to Mr. Tomokos and Mr. Bakhelas and Andy Zemanidis for uh, the, the invitation. It's an honor to be here among uh, such uh, disti distinguished guests. 
Uh, I guess uh, back in 2014, uh, Katerina, we, uh, we as young politicians back then, um, with the youth of the European People's Party, which is the largest alliance of young politicians in Europe, we made an effort uh, to connect young European politicians with young American politicians. It was mostly, at, a f at the first event, it was mostly staffers uh, here in DC uh, who were working for several think tanks like uh, the Atlantic Council, uh, like the Hudson Institute, the IRI, um, and the NDI and other think tanks. Uh, like this event, it was the first one back then, so it had um, some challenges, uh, but the interest was very high. And we saw that uh, young European politicians and young American politicians were very, very interested in deepening the transatlantic relation. Issues like uh, terrorism and energy and trade uh, because of the uh, TTIP agreement uh, were, uh, were the issues, the important issues back then. And everybody uh, was very interested in, in, in taking a position on those issues. But we can't deepen the transatlantic relation if we don't start early. So what I learned uh, from, from this event and from the efforts we did back then with, uh, with YEP and, and the IRI is that um, young politicians uh, on both sides of the Atlantic are not informed enough about the value of this relationship. And this is, this is what we need to do uh, through our parliaments and through our governments, train young people and train people uh, across the aisle and inside or outside politics about the value of the transatlantic relationship. Not many people outside political systems understand why it's important for Greece and why it's important for the uh, European Union to cooperate and collaborate with, uh, with the United States uh, in terms of, uh, of defense and security, in terms of trade, in terms of energy. And we need to work more on that because I, I'm very happy to hear uh, this, this couple of days uh, many speakers say how great the Greek-US Greek, the Greek -US relation uh, is at the moment, it's at its best, but let's face it, not many people outside this room and not many people outside uh, political conferences like this one understand this. So I want to highlight and thank uh, Ambassador Payet because uh, he went beyond the political level. And uh, I heard, uh, I don't know if I told you this, uh, Mr. Ambassador, but man, many friends of mine from the digital sector, from digital startups, uh, ha have discussed about the role the American Embassy have, has played in Greece, supporting these creative minds and uh, supporting Greek talent and uh, empowering them to do more um, in, in entrepreneurship and the startup community. So uh, for these people, seeing that American friends are helping them and empowering them, this is, um, in my view, uh, equally important to what we're doing here uh, among our political systems. So I think the next level in deepening our uh, strategic, strategic relation is to, uh, uh, to target on uh, communities like the startup community, uh, cultural communities, uh, artists, uh, people who are interested in building relationships with their counterparts in, in the United States and uh, create meaningful relationships that go beyond the political level. That's my uh, initial point. Okay, uh, thank you for that, and I have to second it. I, I think I, I became a European through the Erasmus program and trips to Europe, right? And uh, if um, anything that uh, promotes cultural diplomacy, like people-to-people -people ties, can certainly help in that regard in building the transatlantic, or rebuilding, rather, the transatlantic relationship. And uh, I want to uh, go back to Heather and uh, ask you about uh, the ambassador implied about the great power competition in the region, right? And uh, I'm wondering, how do you see the, the role that Greece has to play in that, in that regard? And do you, see that, do you think that Greece is uh, up for, uh, for grabs from other great powers, like it used to be during the Cold War, that it was considered that it would fall under communist, uh, communist rule, and that was the reason why we had the Marshall Plan to begin with? Well, thank you, it's an excellent question because yes, history is back. Uh, and in some ways we've taken a bit of a hiatus from that, from that history. And I think in some ways, um, 
the, the last week or so um, in following Greek foreign and security policy, I'm concerned a little bit about uh, where the, the government is going right now. The foreign minister's first foreign visit uh, was to Moscow. Uh, it's talking about opening a new chapter in bilateral relations. I had a, an opportunity, we hosted uh, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee last week, Senator uh, Jim Risch, and we quoted uh, uh, Prime Minister Kyriakis' statement when President Xi visited Athens and the opening of that, of 16 new uh, agreements and you know embracing China when there is growing concern here in Washington about China's uh, engagement strategy across Europe. Uh, we are very concerned about growing Turkish-Russian rapprochement, which is exactly uh, was the founding or one of the founding motivations for uh, the Truman Doctrine and, and containment and why it was so important to anchor both Turkey and Greece to, to Euro-Atlantic institutions. So all of these very fundamental issues uh, are certainly present. We see Athens grappling with them as other EU and NATO countries are grappling with both Russia's presence and China's presence. And quite frankly, uncertainty about the, um, uh, the sustainability and credibility of US leadership. So I think you know, great strategic partnerships deserve great honesty. And I, I think we have to uh, be concerned that Greece uh, is under pressure from both the, from Moscow and Beijing, but the regional instability, which we're seeing emanating from Syria, we're watching the Lebanon protests, we're seeing uh, continued uh, d destabilization in Libya. This is going to be a very dynamic neighborhood. And the Western Balkans, just to, to put a finer point on Ambassador Pyatt's, the Western Balkans is now a, I'm in increasingly concerned about instability there. So we have a lot of activity. The great power competition is a, certainly a powerful dimension of that, which is why this relationship needs to be put to work to start actively doing things together. But these will be very, very difficult issues, very difficult political issues for the Greek government. I have to give an opportunity to Ambassador Lelakos as well to take this question, and in particular by reminding everyone, by the way, that uh, just last night, uh, the Minister for Development, uh, Mr. Yuriadis, actually tackled this and said there is no way that uh, uh, Greece would look uh, in uh, any other than its Western allies for strategic direction. But uh, I've seen minister after minister during the crisis and after coming to this town asking for American investment in Greece, and I guess this happens uh, only when the conditions are right for private investors to go there. But still, it's been a, a struggle for Greece uh, at, and a huge challenge to attract investment. Of course, yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Lakos, would you like to um, take this question as well? Well, yeah. Uh, let me uh, say first that, uh, as uh, Nick uh, mentioned, uh, one of the great strengths of uh, this improvement in the bilateral relationship has been bipartisan support in both countries, by both sides. And in Greece, uh, I would like to stress the fact that in Greece, where you have more than two parties, it's a multi-partisan support, and every party that has uh, uh, been involved in uh, government uh, over the last decade has been you know, a very staunch supporter of this uh, improvement. Uh, uh, of the relationship. Uh, another point that I would like to make is that defense cooperation has always been the pillar, traditionally has been the pillar of the bilateral relations between the, the US and the Greece. But recently, in recent years, we did so many things you know, beyond the existing uh, uh, level. Uh, I remember periods where you know, we have an existing agreement, the Mutual Defense Cooperation Agreement, the MDCA, in previous years, it was you know, almost a suffocating uh, situation when we tried to find ways you know, to expand this. Uh, not anymore. It, recently, we had a huge deliverable in Athens uh, uh, during the visit of Secretary Pompeo, and that was the signing of uh, a, uh, an updating of the MDCA. And this happened in record time. It started uh, under Minister Apostolakis when he was defense minister, you know, uh, and it only took a few months uh, for, uh, you know, for d d diplomatic uh, uh, 
uh, speeds. You know, this, uh, this was, you know, a record. And I'm, I'm glad it happened. Uh, it's not over, you know, but, you know, it's an ongoing process. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it was a huge milestone. Uh, and uh, let me also say, you know, and come to, uh, to, to your question finally, that another area uh, where we need to be reminded how things have changed spectacularly is energy cooperation. I remember energy cooperation was a sore bilateral issue in, uh, in our dialogue with the United States 10, 15, 20 years ago, back at the time when the only available energy projects involving Greece came from Russia. They never materialized, but they were there, and they were the only ones there. Now, Greece is a champion of diversification when it comes to energy, and in particular, natural gas in our region, and a strong partner of the United States in, uh, in the energy game, in the, uh, not only in the Eastern Mediterranean, in Europe as a whole. And investment, yes, you know, I think that all governments in recent years are in favor of more foreign direct investment. And there is a growing realization in Greece, not only among the governments, but also among the society, that if we are going to have sustainable growth, if we are going to have a meaningful reduction in unemployment, we need investment. And investment can be domestic, but this will be necessarily limited, also because of you know, many factors, banking uh, constraints and others. But, uh, Mostly it will be foreign direct investment. The climate is improving, and uh, we understand that uh, for uh, investors from, from countries like uh, Western countries, uh, from market economies like the United States, you know, they cannot be government-led, uh, but uh, I think that the conditions in Greece now uh, are um, uh, warrant uh, a closer look into investment possibilities by investors from the U.S. and other countries also. Ambassador Bay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted, first of all, thank you, Konstantinos, for putting a spotlight on the work that the embassy has been doing on the issues of high technology and investment. Um, I said for my first days in Greece, this is an issue that came naturally to me as a Californian. I was delighted we had Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis here yesterday. Um, I just want to note two things. First of all, I should have said and uh, sort of left this issue out in part because we have Minister Demos and others who will talk about this later this morning. But for the United States, one of the priorities that we will be working on in the next couple of months is how to deepen our bilateral partnership on high technology, innovative economies, and investment. Uh, we will do this through the vehicle of the Partnership Opportunity Delegation which Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis and um, Minister Yorgiadis uh, 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 alluded to in their comments last night. This will be a State Department initiative planned for February to bring a large delegation of U.S. technology companies to Greece to help lift up what's already happening, which in our view has not gotten enough, enough attention. And there is a lot that is already happening in terms of American investment in technology. Um, you've seen the news in terms of Pfizer's new artificial intelligence center in Thessaloniki. Cisco has announced in conjunction with the city of Thessaloniki a new technology hub in that city. Uh, on Thursday, I had the opportunity to visit the Deloitte Innovation Center in Thessaloniki, which is a project which already has a 200 headcount and will grow up to 500, um, which is aimed to leverage the enormous reservoir of human capital which, in, which Greece enjoys, and to develop Greece as a major hub for servicing clients worldwide in the high-tech and innovative economies. I talked to an Amer another top-tier American company here yesterday, which is also looking at a significant new investment in Greece. So I think a lot of this has already happened. Uh, there have been clear signals from Prime Minister Mitsotakis and his government in terms of the priority here. Um, I would just share with the group, uh, Pfizer in particular, I had worked closely um, with the CEO of Pfizer going back to their role as one of the flagship U.S. companies at the Thessaloniki International Fair in 2018, helped by the fact that the CEO of Pfizer is a Greek-American, Albert Bourla, um, who has become a good friend. But uh, in the summer, Albert brought the entire board of directors and senior management of Pfizer to Greece 
And um, I had the opportunity to spend a couple of days with them. Um, they got the, uh, the elevator pitch from Prime Minister Mitsotakis, who is your most persuasive advocate for foreign investors in Greece. And it was interesting to me talking to all of these CEOs and, and um, board members, mainly from New York, um, on the margins of the event. And they all basically said some version of, you know, we did this investment in Greece because Albert wanted it and we believed in him as our, the leader of our company. But now having seen how much is going on here and having seen what a convincing case the prime minister made, I can't believe we didn't do this earlier. And I think that's a really important message that American companies are seeing that the return of Greece is real, that the value proposition that Greece offers is substantial, and that there is now a government which is clearly demonstrating its intention to move ahead as fast as possible, including in areas like high technology that have not traditionally been associated with Greece. And, and I'm proud of the fact that the US government, our embassy, Secretary Ross and the team at the Department of Commerce, but also importantly, all of my bosses at the State Department have been real advocates of this as well. And I think it will make a difference. Thank you. Uh, I'll have to uh, ask the tough question too, right? And uh, this has to do with uh, the challenges for uh, something that might derail this uh, um, good trajectory of the U.S.-Greece relationship. And I want to ask all of you, from your perspective, what that might entail. What can you see as a situation, as a challenge that might um, derail this good trajectory that the U.S.-Greece relationship has been on, if anything? And I can offer some thoughts. <laughs> I think the biggest risk is that we just don't move fast enough and we don't recognize the opportunities before us. And I think that's as much an issue in Athens as it is in Washington, D.C. Um, but I think, again, simply not working hard enough is the, the biggest downside risk I see. Gosh, the near term, I think I, I continue to worry about growing tensions in and around Cyprus um, and the region, and uh, I, I do worry quite a bit about uh, uh, President Erdogan's uh, behavior in the region, and I think that's very much what Ambassador was talking about, deepening uh, security guarantees, that we uh, see events begin to unfold and, and that the U.S. would not be as responsive as uh, would be required in a dynamic situation. I, I would agree as well. Uh, the inconsistencies, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good that's happening, but it's obviously it's very short term at this point. Um, we're seeing inconsistencies in our own government, unfortunately. Um, that, I think, is a threat. But I see that as a challenge that the rest of us here, not only in the, uh, as Greek Americans, but also uh, as our counterparts in Greece, is even more so we have to step up our own games. And we have to make sure that we're as unified as we can be in making sure that, that, that we show the true value of why this uh, relationship is important to all of us. I think that as long as there's mutual respect uh, between our two countries, and I think now the main change that we've witnessed is that Greece finally uh, is not a country that is constantly asking for things. It's not a country that is asking for financial help or um, uh, it's not coming to uh, official meetings uh, always having demands. It's a country that is offering uh, something. It's a country that uh, is back in business and uh, is open for investment, is open for opportunities, can do a lot of things for the United States uh, in terms of defense and security, um, and is, is a country and should be a country that plays a major role in the Atlantic Alliance, uh, that has an opinion and a view and a vision about it. So um, as long as Greece strengthens its role uh, as a key player uh, in the region and as a player in the European Union and the Atlantic Alliance as a key player in NATO, um, uh, then um, I, I don't see uh, any threats as long as there is mutual respect. Um, also, as a member of the National Parliament, I, I don't think I can uh, answer to hypothetical questions about threats and, uh, uh, and prospects that are not optimistic. So I'll, I'll I can make it, it more spe specific, though. I, I can ask if you think that uh, um, some uh, issue of domestic concern or uh, 
bilateral concerns, say, with Turkey might derail the good impression that uh, um, the U.S. enjoys right now amid the, and the goodwill that the U.S. enjoys amid the Greek public. Do you see public opinion as clumsy as uh, regards the U.S. or a, a bit more stable in their conviction that uh, the U.S. is a strategic ally? Of course, the public opinion is worried, uh, but I mean, I, I think most people are realistic and the political system is realistic about uh, what are the prospects of a, a hypothetical situation as the one you described. Um, I think the mutual defense agreement that we signed is uh, is a very important step uh, towards uh, safeguarding uh, a, a stable situation in, in the Aegean. Uh, and I think the, the, most important, uh, the most important thing that uh, both countries can do to avoid this kind of situations is to deepen our dialogue and our strategic relationship. Um, answering to, uh, to hypothetical questions about a crisis in the Aegean, uh, I don't think will help uh, in, uh, at this time. Ambassador Lekos. Well, I don't want to downplay the importance of the security uh, dimension. You know, Greece's security concerns are real. We are facing, on a daily basis, provocations and challenges to our uh, independence, territorial integrity, and sovereignty. Uh, and uh, this will be there. So the security concerns of Greece are there. What we've seen in the past, if you look back at all the major crises between Greece and Turkey uh, over the past, say, 50 years, uh, there was only one country, one player internationally who played a positive role, uh, uh, and that was the United States. And I think that this will continue to be the case in the near future and in the midterm. I cannot see anything else happening in this respect. So. I'm not saying that this may cause a rift between Greece and the United States, quite the contrary. What I would like to stress is that I see the relationship with the United States having reached a level of maturity that was not there before, and this level of maturity will enable the two countries to work things out in a very positive way, notwithstanding the, complex, the complexity of the situation, and we understand you know, the complexity for everybody involved in this. Nicholas, let's close on a positive note. <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, it's really important that words uh, continue to be followed by actions, um, and especially in the area of investment. I think in the past there's been uh, waves of sort of thinking, or, you know, there's American investment coming to Greece, and, you know, it, it hasn't really materialized one way or another. Um, I'd like to think this time is different, and I think it is for a number of different reasons, but... Uh, we all talk a lot about many different things, but I think what what has been so great about the work that people have done on this stage and, and others is uh, the actions have matched or in some ways exceeded the words. And, and that's, that's critical in today's world is uh, following that path. And so I'm very optimistic and, um, and I think, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of people who are, so it's going to be a, a good future for this relationship. And I have to say that uh, if there was a silver lining that I saw during the crisis is that the relationship shifted from just the traditional issues of having the U.S. mediate between Greece and Turkey to actually constructive working together to deepen the relationship in many other regards as well. Uh, so um, with that, I would like to thank you all for... Uh, your contribution and your work ambassadors in actually strengthening this relationship and uh, I actually uh, I have the honor uh, to also introducing to the panel uh, or to the conference actually uh, Mr. Rince Pribus he, he's been um, uh, the former RNC chairman, of course, but uh, uh, he, he is mostly known for, as the former White House Chief of Staff for President Trump. Uh, Mr. Prebus, please come to the podium to address this panel.